Around the year 1650, during his second trip to Italy, Spanish painter Diego Velázquez painted this wonderful Venus, where you can see the goddess looking into a mirror, held by her son Cupid, reclining languidly on a bed, her back to the viewer. With this female nude, Velázquez liberated his art in two ways. First, he liberated himself from the constraints of courtyard painting. Velázquez was the official painter of the royal family of Spain. Of course, portraying the king and his family was great for status and money, but it was also very conventional and limited in terms of creativity. And it seems that Velázquez always tried to push his creativity to create more than just portraits. And with this Venus, unique in his career, he can break the rules that he's used to follow and he can really unleash his creativity. And secondly, Velázquez also broke the moral taboos that were imposed by the Spanish Inquisition. Painting nudes in 17th century Spain was risky business because the Inquisition was watching closely and the punishment could be quite severe. Fortunately for Velázquez, he was in the right circles and nudes like these were really admired and collected by the aristocracy. So being the king's official painter, it's very likely that he was not worried to paint this. In this painting, you can really sense the ambiguity and the clash between constraint and liberty, between contemplation and desire, between love and lust. In this episode of Learning from the Masters, we are going to see how Velázquez plays on this opposition between desire and contemplation through his composition and his use of color. So to study this painting, first let's talk about the composition. And I want to articulate my ideas about the concept of untouchable voluptuousness or unattainable desire, if you prefer. Let's talk first about the horizontal composition. You can see that this painting is full of NG lines which are curved. Uh, if you follow them, like the folds of the bed, you can see that all the energy lines don't follow any specific geometry. So you can see how these energy lines don't have an, a, a specific structure. They are very organic. What matters with these energy lines is that they really feel like the folds of an unmade bed. And in a way, what you can probably observe is that these folds kind of follow the curves of the body. The folds of the drapery sort of mimic or mirror the curvature of the body itself, which is a great way to emphasize this roundness that the entire painting has. Even though they don't follow a geometric structure, these shapes are not random. They all follow kind of a direction and you can see sort of an origin point around here and they all follow a, a sort of down and up and they all move upwards and finish upwards. There is just one curve that's not following this movement. Can you spot which one? Yes, you found it. This is this one. This curve of the bottom of the goddess and the leg right here is the only one that sort of counters the others. This one pushes up and down, and so it doesn't have the same energy. All these ones have the same energy, and this one in particular is very special. And this is why it stands out so much. You can't just look at something else. You're attracted, and this 
is how Velazquez create this strong desire because by like this is already an object of desire in itself but with such a composition where it's the only curve that goes in another direction it brings even more focus on this object of desire another thing that Velasquez does to emphasize the, the voluptuousness of this body is play on weight in a vertical level. Everything feels like there is a lot of weight. By doing this, Velasquez emphasizes the volume of the body and gives a great impression of weight. It almost feels like she's about to, to go around the edge right here. It almost feels like it's a a 3D and that she's coming out. Velasquez also uses a composition tricks that makes her still untouchable and unattainable. And the thing Velasquez uses is this square. So we talked about the roundness of this entire composition. And this mirror is the only square. And it's also a, a central point in this composition. And the fact that it's the only straight shape makes it attractive to the eye. So even though there is all these curves that are very almost erotic, very, that bring a lot of desire, your eye is also attracted to this central point because it's the only point that's geometric. So you first look at all this roundness, silky roundness, and, and you have to look at some point to this very heart hitting object, which is the mirror. And inside of this mirror, to a scale that's not technically natural, the, the face inside of the mirror, it's technically a little bit bigger than it should be because following the perspective, the face should have a smaller reflection in this mirror. But still, it creates an artificial effect that's very striking. You see the face of the goddess in a very blurry and undefined fashion. She's just barely blocked in. We can ask ourselves, is it to make her feel like ideal and not give her too much of a recognizable face, maybe. This can also be done to create this impression that she's not really welcoming the eye of the viewer. You can say that she's blurry because maybe we're not supposed to look at her. She's not intended to be looked at. And yet, this is the only thing we can look at. Velasquez was famous for playing on eyes, looks, and mirrors like this one. And noticeably in Las Meninas, Velasquez plays a, a game of who's looking at who. And in this painting, it's kind of the same thing. She's looking into our space. We are looking into her space. But the final focus point in this is this square. So after observing the roundness, the voluptuousness of this drapery, this body, we are ultimately attracted to this square, which is the central focus point. So this is how with a, an apparently very simple composition, Velasquez can sort of keep this tension, this ambiguity alive between contemplation and desire. The, the desire comes from all the curves and the contemplation comes from this mirror, which sort of t talks about a more spiritual approach to desire. And this composition, although very simple, is super effective at keeping this tension alive in a very complex state. Everything feels just suspended and, and Velasquez like keeps it this way. You don't want to break this tension because that's the very subject of this painting. Now let's talk about the colors and the harmony of love and spirit. The tone is set by the red, which is often linked to desire and passion. 
and specifically this red is very present in this painting and it sets the tone of the painting and by that I mean let's say that you close this video you don't see this painting anymore and like in a week someone asks you to describe what colors was this painting you'll probably say red that's the color that strikes the most and if you look very closely it doesn't occupy that much space it's actually a small portion of the painting just this corner right here let's see what this painting would look like if we take out this red from the painting so i'm going to cover this red all right so now we don't have this red anymore it's completely covered with my black paint and it changes everything so it tells you how important this red is in the composition it was very common at the time to have a red curtain in the background well this is something that you can spot in many many paintings of this era but with this red in particular it's not just a decoration meant to cover the, the background it's more than this it's an it's an, a color that's supposed to encircle everything it's a color that's supposed to set the atmosphere you can see that if we remove this red all of a sudden the entire atmosphere is sort of muted and you can spot how important this red is and specifically in this cupid right here which appears all red it looks very red the face is full of red it's almost just transparently painted over this red this cupid is blending into the red curtain all the shading appearing here is all made out of this red and of course you have also a very strong reddish component within the body of the goddess herself just like the cupid is shaded by color it's not shadows it's not a, a a gray that create this impression of volume it's this red and this is the same thing that you can see at some places where the body of the goddess has a volume that comes from this very color you can also see traces of this red around the, the cheeks uh, and around various parts of the body sort of as, as to create volume with color now let's talk about this blue gray which is much more sober in terms of color it's a much more neutral it's a less vivid color it's very silky the texture is very simple and this dark neutral color creates a a, a strong balance against this intense red so we yeah, we uh, you have just a corner of this intense red and the rest is all neutral colors and yet this red is still so powerful that uh, you need that much space to counter the intensity of this passionate red now there is a question whether or not this blue gray is actually meant to be seen as this blue gray apparently it was more on the purple side but it's a color that has probably faded which is often something that occurred with plant-based uh, colors back in the days it can still happen light fastness is is a problem for most pigments with the advancement of chemistry we know uh, have more reliable pigments but there is a strong chance that the something bringing a more purplish hue would have been spotted here in this blue gray so let's see what it could have looked like actually all right so i covered this with quinacridone magenta to sort of give an indication of what it could look like if it was more purple mauve uh, it's hard to know exactly i think it was a lot less intense back in the days but study shows that it's probably what it was meant to be in the beginning maybe a little bit less more like this 
who knows? But you can see how it makes a difference. And however, no matter what the Carter was supposed to be, the idea of Velázquez was to bring a balance between this warm red and more neutral hues in this dark drapery in the background. And you can see that this balance is very present in this painting. All the colors try to neutralize this red and you can see that with the action of cool grays that are all over the silky smooth skin of the goddess. Velázquez used gray to contrast with the subtle pink hues of the skin and reddish tones to turn the form and by that he created chromatic volume. If you look at just a black and white version of this painting it looks a lot more flat than if you look at the version with the colors because Velázquez used the colors to create the impression of volume. All right, thank you very much for watching this episode of Learning from the Masters. If you liked it and if you want to see more of these, please leave a like and don't hesitate to uh, subscribe as well. You can also follow me on Instagram to have uh, like more updates on my actual work. Um, if you want to learn more about oil painting and dive into the technical and practical parts of it, you can check out my oil painting course. You'll find a link in the description. And, uh, and also a big thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Uh, and, uh, and you can also find me there if you are interested in learning more and finding exclusive content uploaded every week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you for the next episode. Until then, have fun painting. Bye, stay safe.